Michael here at drawingteachers.com. We're going to do a name by request. This is Courtney, and I've drawn an extra set of guidelines because uh, in this I'm going to do upper and lower case letters, and we're going to use this upper for the big C, and then draw the lower letters. In fact, what I'm going to do here is draw another set of lines because the way I'm thinking about doing this, I'm going to need those lines right there in the middle and really won't need this one so much. So what I'll do to begin as I usually do is check and find out what the middle of my name is um, and that's going to be between the R and the T and I'm really just interested in this part because I'm drawing a very large C for this and I'm going to have it kick out like that and then we're going to come in here and start with the O and I want to end here with a Y somewhere. So, so I'm looking at this part here. I'm going to find the center of that. Um, I won't even need that much room. O, U, R, like that, the T, the N, the E, and then over here the Y. Okay. So that center line is really the T on just this part of it because I've got this really big C. A um, little tight to the edge of the paper right here. There's the edge of the paper, but I'm just going to go ahead and go with it and uh, continue the lesson. I'd prefer to be a little further from the edge of the paper. We'll make this work. Okay, so now uh, I'm just going to do a sort of a flowing if you will, a flowing block style letter and where I'm going to square off the ends of this and I'm going to use the shape of the letter I have as a guide and we'll let those ends flare a little bit and play around with the width on some of these pieces let that C kick out a little bit so we'll let that part of it kick out a bit. And then on the O, I'm going to just set a center for that. And on the U, I'm going to start, start throwing some angles into this. And let's see, on the R, that'll be a, a um, stick base for that. We'll let that be tight and just hang over like that. Let's see, I want that to thin out a little bit the bottom. And for the T, I'm going to give it a little bit of an angle here. I'm going to let it be thicker at the top. And I almost come down and touch this, which is going to get some thick and thin to it. So I'm starting to feel a rhythm here for the letters, and I need to make some adjustments to my curves. kind of going with the flow on this. The letters get thin at a certain point and then they they get thin in this these areas right here and here, here, right here. So sort of these top and bottom parts they thin out and they're fatter on the sides. So that's what I'm going to do with these. I'd like to say I always go in here knowing exactly what I'm going to do but I don't. I, I sort of uh, get started and sometimes I know exactly where I'm going. Sometimes I'm just sketching and working out a cool idea and hoping that it uh, it works. My C is actually getting a little bit of a feel of like a Coca-Cola C. Not exactly, but uh, that come down right there. So keep making adjustments. Alright, C-O-U-R and uh, do a crossbar for that T. Let that connect right up there to the R. That'll be cool. And for that matter, we can let the U connect to the R. Kick off a little piece right there. Alright, for the N Let's have this start down here, and we'll do it a lot like the R, 
right here, except it's going to come all the way back down. And how about we let that connect to the T right there. Kick out a little bit. And the E, let's set the slope on that center part. And uh, we'll bring that around. And now this, kind of like the O here, we'll have a narrow piece up in there. It'll connect across there, kind of thin, and then get thin at the bottom. So it's almost like an O with a crossbar and a little gap there. And for the Y, it's almost like an upside down U. Not an upside down U, but it's almost like a U. I don't know why I said upside down, that's dumb. Uh, it's like the U, except this part will now kick down. Let's do something cool here. Let's let's see. What if what if that connected to that? Made that all one piece right there. this curve here till it feels right. I had it dip too low there. See I don't always know what I'm doing, I'm just, just working it out. So I encourage you just uh, just just work it out. cool. Not totally cool yet. Maybe it'd be better if these two just came close to each other. Something more like that. All right, I think uh i got some to work with there, so we'll go ahead and get the marker out and we'll clean some of this up. Make a couple of, uh, a couple of adjustments here, add a couple of ends to these before I do that. Okay, now I'll find my black marker, got a sharpie here, and uh, make sure I've got something underneath it because that sharpie will bleed through. And I'm putting these little uh, serifs they're called, these are little pieces that come out from the ends of, ends of letters. All right, so I don't smear my drawing too much. I'm going to use a piece of paper here for a shield for my hand. connect those two. That'll be sort of interesting. And 
and we're going to connect this to the T. We're connecting that to the N. So let's go back and finish the T. Now, like I said, the N is uh, very similar to the R, just with uh, the rest of the letter filled in. The rest of that, that leg filled in. And the E is very similar to the O. And that way you get a uh, consistency of letter shapes. So if you're making your own name and it's not Courtney, then uh, if you do an O, uh, you want to look at the other round letters like the A's and the E's and, and look for similar shapes. Your, your letters like L's and T's and I's and H's will have similar shapes going on in them. Okay, now I'm going to pull this line down towards the center of my body. Hold the paper. It's a long line to keep straight. Turn the paper so I can continue this line. Making adjustments as I go. Didn't quite hit my curve there, but what I'll do when I come back to do the other one is I will just compensate. Trying to match that. I'm going to let it get thinner right down here and then let it thicken up as it comes over to this. Alright, very cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase my pencil lines and we will uh, probably do a drop shadow on this, except I'm not going to do this drop shadow on marker. We'll do it in something uh, like colored pencil. Alright, and I've got my kneaded eraser. I drew this very heavy, so it's going to take a fair amount of erasing to get this off of here. Holding my paper so as not to crinkle it up. Oh, that's looking very nice. to rub really hard on this. So uh, when you're doing this, please don't draw so dark. Just try to keep your sketching very light. Make this a lot less work for yourself. Alright, there we go. Now, um, I know what we'll do. We're going to do the drop shadow with a gray. And uh, let me check and see how dark this gray is. That's sort of a greenish gray. Not sure I like that. Let's find something else. Maybe we won't do it with a gray. Maybe we'll do it with a purple. I like that. Let's go with a purple drop shadow instead of the black and uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll drop it down to the right and we'll just start coloring in that drop shadow Using a purple marker. Whoops, crossed right over onto my letter there. Didn't mean to do that. Um, we'll we'll deal with that later.
little mistakes like that can be hidden. For instance, we'll put a little put a little shadow effect on the bottom of the letters and that will that will take care of that. Okay. Getting over here to the Y, drop over to the side, in a bit. Follow that edge down. And around like that. And we're going to get a little drop under there. A little drop under there. Working my way back in. So you don't always have to go letter by letter. You can you can start for, go forwards, go backwards. Is basically what I'm doing is compensating for where I colored over the letter I'm making some fixes and my marker is drying out a bit so I'm, I'm using that to my advantage here and just uh, sketching out some coloring on here stroking mostly up from the bottom But see, I'm leaving that white edge. there. Okay, let's come back in with some colored pencil. I'm looking for a good looking pink color. Oh, that's a pink, but it's not a pink pencil. It's just a pink covering on a pencil. I've got a red here, red-orange. That's not going to do it. That's another red orange. If you look in my drawer here. Well, I don't appear to have a pink, but I do have do have a red. So, I'm going to sharpen that up. Got this little metal sharpener. Um, if you don't need a fancy pencil sharpener, these work just fine. I got that at the art supply store in the drafting section and they make them with different size different size holes depending on your different size pencils but uh, handy little thing to have alright so now I'm going to start blending in some of this red here into this and just working my way up in layers. Coloring in the white areas and also coloring back over the marker to blend that red into there.
All right, so let's tighten this up a bit by coming in here and we'll hit some of these edges a little stronger. And I'm hitting mostly the, the right side of this with a pretty hard, uh, hard red line and then just fading it off. So what we've done is we've sort of, we start coloring and now we're refining our edges, making them nice and crisp. And uh, we'll go down into this purple section and do the same with with a marker, or not a marker, but a colored pencil. If I can find a purple, and I'm not finding a purple, but I'm finding this dark blue here. So I'm sharpening that up. A pretty nice tip on that. Yeah, let's go ahead and see if whoop, it broke right off. That was no good. Let's throw that away. Ah, uh, here I found one. Here's a pencil. It's got a blue on it. Let's see if I can use that to tighten that up a bit down there. Add a little blue at the bottom. I'm not really getting getting the intensity of color I need out of that. So that happens. Oh, here's a purple marker, a dark purple marker. Let's try that. Yeah, that works better. Now you'll find that marker and colored pencil don't don't play well together if you try to marker over colored pencil. So I'm just hitting the edges here, but the uh, the pencil will resist the water-based marker. By resist, I mean it just won't stick. But this is doing all right here because we do not have a lot of pencil coverage. All right, and I'm feeling like I need a little more, a little more work on the red here, and these because I didn't really do that part yet. Finish my work on that. It's a lot like painting a wall uh, white. If uh, you paint one wall white in your room, then the other one starts to look dirty. So as you get one letter finished, 
I can look at the other letters and I start looking unfinished. And so I just keep working it till it feels pretty even to you. Now I've uh, got a little smudge down here. I'm going to clean up my smudges. And uh, I'd like to give this whole thing a, a great looking outline. Um, overall, I think we've got some problems down here. This got a little too dark. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but we're going for design and ideas um, on this pass. If I wanted to make this perfect, I'd probably have to go back and uh, do it over. Might have to do it a couple of times. Uh, I'm going to play around with kicking a green outline on this. Let's just test that color and see how that looks against that. I think that'll be pretty exciting. It'll look nice against that purple. And so this is a teal green marker. The actual color name, it doesn't have a color name. All right, big long pull here. Take a deep breath and then just just pull that towards you. These big long pulls are very hard. You can do them in little pieces, but then you get little dark spots. I can tell you that I, I often hold my breath while I'm doing that, or I gently exhale. It takes practice. Definitely better to put the paper in a position that helps you. Pull that line in a way that's easy for you to pull. So um, don't be afraid to do a piece that's just, just saying, hey, this is a practice piece. I'm just going to practice pulling lines on this one. And if I mess up, I mess up. Because if you're working on your final piece you'll be like oh my gosh I'm just so concerned about getting this perfect that just probably trying to get it perfect will mess you up Alright, that's pretty cool. And uh, now let's give this color in here that'll make it pop. Maybe this light green will look good and we'll see what that looks like right in there. Now I think I need something brighter than that. And here is a. That's not right. Maybe a yellow will work. Let's try a yellow. Fill this in yellow here. And Courtney, if uh, if you're watching this and you hate the colors, uh, sorry about that. Because this is getting a little wild in color. But if you like the colors, great. I'm going to be careful not to get yellow onto purple because you mix yellow and purple together and just get sort of a muddy brown. So try not to overlap. It's okay if it gets on the green because that actually, I'm actually going to do that. It actually brings the green into more of a yellow green. So I'm, as I'm moving back around here, I'm actually covering part of that green and it ties it in better with that yellow. It becomes more of a bright green.
But the uh, yellow and purple together are not going to look good when they overlap. Just get, get a brown yuck color. Which, well, brown can be very good if you need a brown. Alright, now I feel like this uh, green is, is a little weak. I want to hit it around one more time with, with something like a black or a dark color. But I don't want it as thick, nor is it as thick as I had with the, um, hold on, I'm going to grab another set of markers here. Got some Prismacolor markers here, and I've got some very thin tips on them. I'm actually going to look at one of the thicker ones, this one right here. So if you don't have these fancy markers at home, you you might get away with just a. Uh, let me show you here another marker, a marker like this. That might be a little too thin, um, or a thin sharpie. But I don't have a thin sharpie here, so I'm going to use this. Just to come around and do a finishing outline right touching the edge of this, this green here. You can have a lot of fun with outlines. You can really do as many different layers of outline as you want to enhance your design. Got a little off track there. We'll just get back on track. All right. All right, it's looking pretty cool. I wonder if it would look good to go in here and outline the edge of the yellow too. Might be a little much, but uh, go ahead and do it. Sort of multi-layered outline. So you can get a lot of cool effects using different 
thicknesses of markers and different colored markers. the C and the O here, doing this part. All right, looking pretty cool. All right, last but not least, this is getting to be a long video, but I want to put some highlights in here. And since I've already colored, I need something white. And I'm thinking of using some white acrylic paint. So I got this Put this white paint here. Put a little dab of white paint on that, and find myself a good looking brush. And I've got a set of brushes here. That's a kind of a scrubby looking little brush, but um, this one may work right here. No, probably too big. Let's see. With this, this scrubby little brush might give me what I want. And what I want to do is, is pre-wet my brush. And I pre-wet it, just dipped it in a little water so that the paint doesn't soak into the bristles. And get a little paint on there. I'm going to do a little bit of a highlight right here. A little bit of highlight right there. And so, so we're actually using paint on our drawing here. And right on down here, I'm going to hit this a little bit. Hit that a little bit. All right, and uh, we'll call that done.